Hi everybody, it's me Blanche and welcome to Feast in the Middle East and usually when I do a vlog it is about food or culture but today I want to talk about something different. Um, I've been getting a lot of emails from a lot of people who ask me how I managed to stay fairly fit after having two children and I want to share uh, some really important weight loss, weight maintenance um, tips. Actually, there's one tip, it's actually one secret that I think most of America doesn't know about, um, and it's called intermittent fasting. Now, before I get into intermittent fasting, uh, I need to tell you a little bit about my background. So, while I do these cooking videos, uh, before that, my life before that was as a journalist, and as somebody who is always researching nutrition, and even now I'm a fitness instructor, so I do teach uh, Zumba, I teach dance fitness, and I also teach some boot camp uh, occasionally. And so I've always been passionate about fitness, always researching fitness. And I, like most women, after you have your kids, you hit this plateau, you know, those last five pounds, last seven pounds, last 10 pounds. In my situation, it was like seven pounds. That would not budge no matter how healthy I ate, no matter how much I exercise. I exercise a lot. I'm a very active person. Um, I exercise almost every day in one way or another. But sometimes the body just... You know, you might lose five pounds after eating really, really well, and then after uh, a couple of days, the weight comes back much faster than you took it off. It's just not fair. And as we get older, you know, I wish I was back in my 20s when I could eat anything, pretty much anything I wanted. I mean, I used to eat whole burritos. I don't even know how I did that, but shoot, I mean, I miss those days. And um, and now I, I'm, I have to really be conscious of what I eat because I'm always... Uh, I always have to be camera ready. You know, whether I'm uh, doing a show for you guys, I also model on the side. I do quite a bit of modeling and I'm a fitness instructor, so I wanna inspire my students. So I can't, you know, just let it all go and not be a fit person. It's part of my being, it's what makes me happy. Okay, so when you look at thin people, they probably have these healthy habits that they're doing that you don't even realize they're doing. They don't even realize they're doing, uh, as well as Europeans. Europeans also have this healthy habit that they don't realize they're doing, and it is intermittent fasting. What is intermittent fasting? It is basically fasting from the last meal you eat to the first meal you eat the next day. So let's say you finish eating dinner at 6 p.m., so you do not eat one bit of food until the next day. Uh, let's say you eat breakfast at around 10 in the morning, so you start breakfast at 10. Now, there are different ways people fast. So some people fast for 16 hours and eat for eight hours. Some people fast for 20 hours and eat for four hours. Some people fast 24 hours and eat one meal a day. Now you might think, oh my gosh, that's pretty much starving and your metabolism is gonna slow down. But actually the opposite is the case. When you are in a fasted state, your metabolism actually increases. Yeah, I know this sounds crazy because it goes against everything you hear about in mainstream media. But what happens is your body is either in a fasted state or a fed state. And when you're fasted, you are giving off human growth hormone. Human growth hormone is the fat burning hormone. And it also keeps you younger. It makes you look younger. When you are in the fed state, when you're eating, no matter what you're eating, you're pumping out insulin. And insulin is the fat storage hormone, okay? So you got those, you're either fasted with human growth hormone or you're feeding with insulin. Now, what happens when you are eating all day long? They advocate, okay, you know, when, especially when you're working out, you should eat every two to three hours. You're pumping insulin all day long. That's what's happening. And so your body never gets a chance to get to the fat storage because you're basically burning sugar all day long. Food converts to glycogen or sugar. And so you're burning sugar all day long and you never get to that fat store. That's what the fat is for. Fat storage is for those times when you run out of food, you go to the ta you go to the fat storage, right? It only makes sense. So if you can visualize two kinds of animals, right? You've got hippopotamuses, hippopotamus, hippopotamus, cow, and then you've got 
like a panther, okay? The hippopotamus or the cow, they're grazing all day long. They're just like, you know, they're just, even though they're eating grass, right? You think, you know, I'm like, I can't gain weight from eating grass all day long, but they get some heavy duty weight gain eating grass all day long. So they're chewing, 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 chewing. Chewing, elephants, chewing, 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 right? You look at the panther, he has to find his kill, hunt it, kill it, eat it, and then he doesn't eat again until he kills again, which might be in another 24 hours. And you look at the panther, they're lean, they're muscular, and, and what would you rather look like, the panther or the hippopotamus? That is the question, right? I personally would rather have panther-like qualities. I'd rather be quick, agile. And here's the deal with intermittent fasting. When you are in a fasted state, you allow your body to heal. Uh, so if somebody is suffering from diabetes or you have an autoimmune disease, you give your body that time to relax, to let go of the digestive process and focus on whatever is plaguing the body, whether it's insulin or something else. So it's actually very healing to the body. I mean, that's why when we're sick, we don't want to eat because our body is working on healing. So you are not starving, you are basically healing and you're pumping out human growth hormone, which is making you younger, and you're allowing your body to get to those fat stores so that you're burning fat instead of sugar from eating all day long. Okay, so the way I started intermittent fasting was I started slowly. So first I fasted for 12 hours. And it's amazing what you can be nibbling on in those hours after you make dinner and before you make breakfast. Because you know, if you have kids, you're making them meals too. And there's a tendency to nibble. Maybe you want to try something or, you know, and it is important to me as somebody who cooks to taste my food to make sure it's good before I serve it. So that I understand. But it's amazing what you can cut out just if you don't eat those 12 hours. Then I pushed the window to 13 hours. Then another week I pushed it to 14 hours. Then I pushed it to 16 hours. And I'm not going to say that it was easy. There were times when I was dizzy and I drank a lot of water. Now that's really important to drink tons and tons of water. I drank coffee. It's important to drink uh, black coffee. If you need it sweetened, drink, uh, sweeten it with a bit of stevia. No artificial sweeteners like forget aspartame, Splenda, because those can spike insulin too. I'm, I'm not a fan of those artificial sweeteners. So go for like organic stevia. Um, if you absolutely positively need something in your coffee, maybe a tiny splash of cream, like a tiny splash. What happens is you want to stay in that fasted state and anything you eat can set off that insulin response to take you out of that fasted state. So, so I got through with uh, carbonated water. I love my Pellegrino, uh, my Perrier. Um, it also has some added minerals, which is great um, to really give you that extra energy. So in the beginning, I'm not going to lie, it was kind of hellish. I'm like, what am I doing? I, can I last? Can I last doing this? And oddly enough, as I got used to this lifestyle, I had more mental clarity. I had more energy. And I realized that I was living off of my fat stores. And when you're living off your fat stores instead of food, you have a lot more energy and you do think more clearly. Like I was able to write newspaper articles and stay focused like never before. It was fantastic because sometimes you get distracted, right? If you have to do a task, you get distracted by all kinds of things. I mean, now in the digital age, I mean, we're, we've got you know, five different kinds of technology making buzzing sounds uh, in our face, grabbing for our attention, but I was able to focus. And my body recomposition changed. So when people tell you your metabolism decreases, it's a crock of poop. <laughs> so I do the underwater dunk to check my fat composition, okay? I do it as a fitness instructor. I like to gauge my, my, my gains because I do weight train and I like to lift heavy. So I like to see how much muscle I'm adding. And after uh, like a month or so of intermittent fasting, I lost two pounds of fat and I gained one pound of muscle, okay? That's crazy because it's really hard for a woman too to put on muscle. Usually when people gain muscle, they gain fat because they tell you, oh, you want to gain muscle, you got to eat a lot, you know, and you're going to inevitably gain some fat with that muscle. And so you're eating, people are eating and pumping and eating and pumping and they're getting bigger and they're kind of getting stockier. And I want to lean out. I don't like that big, fat, stocky look. So it was miraculous. I mean, and you might not think, oh, a pound, two pound, no big deal. 
No, actually, go to the store right now and get like a package, like a pound of chicken, okay? And look at that and put it on your body. And it's a substantial amount. I mean, a pound of fat is 3,500 calories. And the beautiful thing is, when you are fasted and it's time to eat, you eat big meals. I'm not saying this is a starvation diet. I'm not saying to, you know, nitpick at lettuce. You want, I eat healthy, good fats that keep me full for a very long time. That's very important because once your body starts getting into that fat burning state, your body's used to burning fat. And it's funny, my cravings for sugar went away. Gosh, you guys, you don't understand like how epic that is that my sugar cravings went away because I love sugar. I love chocolate. I love sweets and it's funny my cravings for that went away and you don't obsess about food much anymore when you're intermittent fasting. You also have more time because instead of like you know food prepping I'd, I instead of eating breakfast early which is what I always used to do I eat breakfast sometimes 12 sometimes 3 o'clock in the afternoon and I still eat breakfast food because I love breakfast food and then I'll eat again maybe at 6 o'clock and then I'm done for the day and then I start over and it's really freed up a lot of my time. I'm a very busy person. I'm juggling a lot of things at the same time and it's a beautiful thing if you're very busy and you're trying to juggle a lot. Intermittent fasting won't leave you hangry. Like back in the day, like if I didn't eat every three, four hours, let's say I was running errands, I'd be like, oh my God, I'm so dizzy. I need something to eat. I need to pack a snack in my purse uh, to get me through the day. Now it's like, eh, you know, it's three o'clock. I haven't eaten all day. Yeah, whatever. I'm going to go home and really kill it. I'm going to eat a fantastic meal and enjoy it and really savor it. And I love eating big meals. Like this whole little eat little teeny tiny meals throughout the day, that doesn't cut it for me. And it also sets people to just nibble and eat a lot more than they really need all day. So it just develops bad habits that way. And if you look at European people, you look at French people, why are they thin? It's not just because they smoke. It's not just because they walk a lot. It's because they eat these big meals that they really enjoy and they don't really snack all day long the way Americans do. And the way, you know, a lot of industrialized nations do. Um, the snack companies are not going to be happy with this video, frankly. I, I realize that because they're the ones pushing this, this agenda to get people to snack all day long. And intermittent fasting saves you money and it saves you time. And there's really no need to be snacking. And the best kind of diet to follow is one that agrees with you. If you're gluten-free, go gluten-free. If you're vegan, high carb, go vegan, high carb. But the most important thing is to eat healthy food. Just eat healthy whole food. And I like to, I do eat some carbs. I enjoy my carbs, whether it's sweet potato, a bit of bul bulgur wheat, some farro wheat, um, some spelt, oatmeal, stuff like that. I really enjoy that stuff. Um, so I don't give that up. Um, and I love my avocado, my coconut oil, uh, olive oil, my all the kinds of nuts like cashews and pecans and pine nuts and all that good stuff that we use in our Middle Eastern cuisine. Those are all good healthy fats and they keep you full. What really sold me on intermittent fasting is there is a lot of medical research that has been done on it that shows how effective it is and how ineffective it is to nibble all day long. I mean, if you really want to get down and dirty with the scientific uh, background on this, I highly recommend The Obesity Code uh, by Dr. Jason Fung. He's extraordinary. He's a nephrologist. And I actually found out about intermittent fasting because I was looking for ways to um, help my dad out who has diabetes. And I was looking at this nephrologist seminar and he had some amazing information and you know, I passed it on to my dad and my dad lost like 15 pounds. I'm so proud of him. So he does his own version of intermittent fasting where he eats you know, more healthy fats and he's cut out his carbs and he snacks on things like pumpkin seeds and nuts and other things and he puts the, he, no more you know, snacking on the chips and all that stuff. And I'm super proud of him and anyone can do this. It's super accessible and I'm totally not into as a fitness instructor. When students ask me about weight loss, the last thing I would ever recommend to them is to do those like 
meal replacement, you know, deliver to your door or, you know, get this kind of snack or, you know, go low, super, super low carb, go into, you know, I, I don't know. There's so many different kinds of, of diet plans out there. And I just say, do what works for you as long as you eat whole foods and you fast when you're not eating. And my personal record so far has been 22 hours of fasting. I sort of feel like a superhero. It's kind of crazy, especially when I'm really busy, I'm pumped and I'm doing one thing after another and I'm running errands and I'm writing articles and I'm teaching classes, which brings me to another important topic. And that is fasted, fasting while um, exercising, okay? In the beginning, it was really hard. <laughs> People say, oh, you shouldn't fast while you're exercising. Well, actually, you can really uh, take that weight loss or fat loss even over the plateau that much more if you work out when you're fasted. Because think about it, you're burning that much more energy and you're using the fat reserves instead of the sugar that you just ate. So what I do to get through big, heavy weight training workouts is I do take BCAAs, which are branch chain, branch chain amino acids. That's the building blocks of protein. So I take that as a sort of extra measure to make sure that my muscle doesn't break down. Even though I know my muscle probably won't break down because it's been proven in scientific study after scientific study, I just take it, it gives me energy. I feel like I lift more when I take BCAAs. And it's really important to pick the right BCAAs, so don't get the stuff that has a bunch of artificial uh, flavors and colors. And a lot of them have um, like aspartame or acylfame potassium. That's a really bad one. That's like super carcinogenic. So find one that's natural if you wanna take BCAAs. And if you want me to do another video on BCAAs, leave it in the comment below and I could crank out another video just about working out in the fasted state and what the things that I do uh, and the BCAAs that I take. So if you want that information, just you know, give me a heads up in the comments below. And actually, if you do have any questions, please leave them in the comments below and I will try my best to ask them. If I get enough comments, maybe I could do another video of this and, and answer all of your questions. Maybe I could go live and take some live questions. Give me your thoughts because I wanna to respond to your needs and I really hope that I've helped you. In a nutshell, when it comes to intermittent fasting, we have been conditioned to expect food at certain times. And it's just about wanting the food and not really about needing the food. And when you're on intermittent fasting, you're more in tune with your hunger signals. You really truly feel what hunger is like. And when you eat, you really truly enjoy that food and you're not obsessing about food. It's actually very healthy. Uh, for the for the mind body and soul now unless you have an eating disorder I do not recommend this at all if you have an eating disorder go see your doctor talk to them about intermittent fasting But if you're just you know, just like me, you know a mother or somebody that's been on a diet roller coaster and and enough is enough And you're sick and tired of it all intermittent fasting can change your life you just have to hang in there and push that fasting window. And when you're hungry, that's not a bad thing. Hunger is when your fat is burning. Do you understand that? When you are super hungry and you're getting to the end of your fast and you're like, damn, I'm so hungry, you're not gonna die. Okay, you're not gonna die. That is when your fat reserves are being burned up for your activity. So it's actually a good thing. And when you look at hunger that way, you can really get through intermittent fasting. And what I truly love about intermittent fasting is that it's flexible. So you cater it according to your schedule. If you're a super early riser and you like to eat in the beginning of the day, do all your feeding window in the beginning of the day and then fast later on in the day um, until the night, until the next morning. Now, if you are, if you like to stay up till two o'clock in the morning, then you can break your fast at like five o'clock at night and then eat dinner at 11 and then go from there. It really doesn't matter when you eat. And I love that you can actually coordinate it according to your schedule. If you have a, a like a big event or a big wedding and you really want to look great in your outfit, uh, you could fast right up until the event and then eat at the event. Nothing bad will happen to you. <laughs> and to be honest, when I think about intermittent fasting, I think about my grandmother. She's 94 years old and she's been intermittent fasting her whole life without even realizing it. You know, she eats. A nice big meals and she doesn't eat for the rest of the day uh, she eats she actually her her eating windows like between 
uh, 10 and 4. So she eat, always has eaten between 10 and 4. She eats dinner at 4 and she's done. And try giving her something to eat. She's like, nope. So it's like, uh, it worked for her. She's 94 years old for crying out loud. And you should see this woman. Her mental clarity is insane. She remembers stuff I don't remember. She exercises. She survived a hit and run accident. She survived like a hold up robbery. I mean, this woman is made of steel and it's all about intermittent fasting. So I say, give it a try, you know, and if you need uh, support, let me know, I'll make more videos. Like I said, leave all your comments and questions below and perhaps I could do another video on this. Now, what I really want you to do though is stay tuned because next week I'm going to show you how I break my fast. So what's just as important as fasting is how you break your fast is really important. And I break my fast in a very strategic way to give me super energy throughout the day. And I'm really excited to share that video with you. So give this video a thumbs up if you'd like to learn more, subscribe to my channel. And I'm really excited because I want this channel to be about wellness too, you know? For me, the Middle Eastern diet has always been about wellness, treating your body nicely with whole foods. But you know, there are other ways that you can enhance your health. And I think IF is one of them. So thank you for your time and I'll see you guys soon.